All right, what's happening? I got the uh, little convertible all detailed up there. A little buff job and some wax. She looks pretty good. Going inside up. I've been driving it pretty regular. We work on this door this week. It's for Gaden. I think I showed that to you guys last week. Let me grab the stand so I'm not shaking you to death. Oh, I'm going to cover something here that's pretty important. And if you're building your motor at home and you're using one of these aluminum cases, you should probably watch this. And uh, Sometimes you assume people know to check everything, you know. And then you get reminded by somebody. Don't forget to tell them about that. So Easy Jeezy wanted me to remind you guys about this. And if you haven't checked out Easy Jeezy, go over there and look at his channel. He was showing how to CC heads on his last video, which was pretty helpful. If you're trying to set up your compression ratio and stuff, you're going to need to know how to do that. So a few things we'll have to do when we do a stroker. And the case is going to need to be clearance. That's what these uh, notches are up here, so the rod can swing through there with the extra stroke. This cam bearing needs to be cut off here. You can see where the case has been clearance. That has to be gone. So a couple mods. This isn't the bearing we're using. We just had that in there to uh, line up our oil holes. And that's what we're talking about in this video. Oil feed alignment to the bearing. I have three uh, different main bearings here. Rear bearings, front bearings, whatever you refer to the back of the case as, flywheel side. This is actually the front of the motor. This is actually the rear. So we're just going to refer it to as the uh, flywheel side of the motor. This is a brand new case, never been line board. It's an aluminum uh, raised top, shuffled pin clearance for a stroker. It's what they call their super case. So this is something that you need to watch out on no matter what case you buy. And uh, if it's an aluminum case, this needs to be checked. And you might as well check it if you're using a magnet case too. This is our oil feed hole right here. Where the scribe is at. Now there's a line in the back of this bearing that you can see here. That's where it picks up the oil from the oil feed hole. Now if you put the bearing in here, you can see this oil feed hole is covered up by the bearing. So we're going to have to modify the hole or the bearing. The bearing's the easier easier fix but these holes on these cases are in the wrong spot and if you don't do this modification you stand a really good chance of locking the rear bearing or the front bearing up the flywheel side of the motor bearing uh, the one with the thrust washers on it this is a very important modification so we have the uh, cleave light bearing right here uh, I've got a couple different main bearings. These cleave light bearings have to be prepped. You can't just stick this in the motor. These need to be scotch brighted. They have this protective coating and that's for shipping. And a lot of times that's to cover up how shitty the bearing is. So you want to take some white scotch brite and clean parts washer and scuff this surface and get that shipping coating off of there. And inspect the bearing underneath the, the coating. Some people think that's a coating that's on there for startup, or it's the babbit on the bearing, and it's not so. Uh, in the race motors, we always clean the bearing with a white scotch brite and get that coating off the bearing. So we have the bearing, the oil, and the crank, and no foreign material in there. A lot of times if you leave this on in a high oil pressure situation, you'll pull your motor apart and you'll see little spots all over the bearing, and that's just stuff coming off, getting hot, and it sticks on the bearing. So it's a good good idea to take that off. Now that's personal preference also. So you guys do what you want. This isn't a how-to. This is how I do it. So and I was taught a long time ago, so I'm old school. Now the way I do this bearing clearance is usually I use a pen. But I know it's going to be off quite a bit with this, uh, this setup. So you just want to scribe. This is your oil line. On the rear bearing it's harder to see because it's closed off. You just want to put a scribe mark right there. You can see it's very light. And then when you take the uh, scribe mark, which is right here, you can see that bearing is probably getting maybe half, not even half of that oil feed hole. So we're going to have to modify the bearing where it can pick this oil up 
and if you don't you get very very little oil into this groove and it'll seize up the bearing it's a, it's a common problem with these aluminum cases now you got, I got three bearing sets here and uh, this is what I do on the performance stuff I don't incorporate the circle bearing in the front behind the uh, timing gear I use the split case bearing the center main in this position also this is a steel back bearing it's not aluminum depending on what brand you buy now this is becoming a real issue with bearings this is the cleave light stuff it's all steel back this is a cleave light bearing and the uh, silver line bearings this is a silver line the cleave lights have a groove in it I really didn't like the groove on the uh, general side of the bearing I actually have a feed groove in the bearing let me show you what I mean by that here's the cleave light bearing and you can see the back of the bearing is smooth I'll show you the different constructions so you have the back of this bearing is smooth all they have is the dowel pin and they have an oil feed hole there this one feeds through this line on the back of the bearing that's your dowel pin hole this is your oil feed line and then Cleveland puts this big groove in the bearing on the uh, journal side well that does hold some oil in there that's true but it also wears the crank you know you have a lot less support on the crankshaft there instead of having a full bearing surface now it's diminished to these two surfaces here this is a mall bearing these are shit I wouldn't use those in anything this is aluminum now total junk this won't last a week in a good motor and uh, why they've gone to aluminum bearings is only one reason and that's cost this is a multi-layer construction steel back bearing and this is a solid aluminum I would call this a shim not even a bearing so uh, stay away from those mall red and white box no good the cleave lights say mall on them also but they are steel so I would steer clear of uh, this crap and uh, you know unless you want aluminum bearings in your motor that's just a shim and uh, if you guys ever tried to hot rod a Mitsubishi from the factory you know they have aluminum bearings and the first thing that goes out is the bearing so it's just an upgrade you have to do there's no sense uh, going backwards they've always used steel back bearings on Volkswagens so it's just a it's just a good idea to incorporate what they used to use not what they uh, want us to change over to now we take this uh, center bearing and we pop it in here the oil feed is in the same location so I can use this for a demonstration to show you how far off the hole is so basically this has the line on the opposite side of the bearing so it lets me tap it in there and I can show you you can see the hole is uh, not Jake you need to straighten that shit up or you won't have good luck it'll run but as soon as you start extending the RPM range of the motor and stuff you're gonna have issues so that's what's going on here a little uh, bearings clearing clearancing for the oil hole Somebody want to know how the hell that crank was on there. There's the uh, crank assembly, all uh, torqued up, ready to go. That is the Jeanberg forged gland nut welded to the uh, table there. And uh, I don't know if I recommend it or not. It's been hanging in there for about, I don't know, about six, seven years now. But it's scary sometimes. And uh, they make crank holders. They actually have like a gland nut in them and you can tighten it up and it centers off the uh, dowel pins. This is just a poor man setup, and I wouldn't try this with a regular gland nut. You know, you almost have to get one of those uh, scat nuts that you can't use that are too big. Like this one. This is a perfect candidate, you know. This is that, I don't know, inch and something. I don't know. It's got that not 36 millimeter socket fits this. this this is too big and it hits and interferes with a lot of clutch disc so I don't like to use these they call them super nuts but they make great crankshaft you know if you want to do crankshaft jig on the end of your bench you can weld that baby to there and it'll never break now a cast one you probably don't want to use because they break pretty damn easy 
And what I mean by cast is a factory Glen nut. They're not very strong. But anyway, that's what's happening. Sort of a slow day today. It was it President's Day? Kids are home. I think Andrew just took them skating. I'm gonna work on this motor and uh, try to get my short block built. I have to get some uh, wrist pin keepers from Scooter, some bird keepers. I'm not gonna use the wire type. We'll get the uh, snap ring type. And uh, I need to pick up some uh, bird push rods. And uh, we'll be ready. I think I can pretty much put this together next week and uh, have it ready to go. I don't know. Somebody asked me if I was going to put it in the convertible, and I don't think I am. Just because, uh, I don't know, I'm really enjoying the way it drives. I've never had a stock VW, and it's, uh, it's pretty cool. You know, you just drive and don't worry about anything. It's got heat, so that's been pretty cool. And uh, eventually, I'm sure it'll make its way in here. But, uh, you know, you just can't throw the motor in there. You got to do a tranny, too. So, and this tranny works really well. So, it might find its way in the blue car first, the 73, which is out here. It's basically my test car. That was a birthday present from Scooter when I worked down there. And I've had it ever since. I've had that car for a good 25 years now. But, uh. It's a good car. It'll take some power. It works real well. It's got a good tranny in it. And uh, I actually have to take tranny out of that. It's a freeway flyer. I had somebody that was interested in that. And uh, I'm going to build a close box for it. I have, uh, already have the gearbox assembled down there. It's dirty as shit now. It'll have to be taken apart and cleaned again. But it's pretty much ready to go into a gearbox. I got that Rhino case that we've been prepping up. And I need to just take a week and uh, build that. But I got the close ratio box. I'm changing it over to IRS. I think I got some side plates in here somewhere. And uh, I need to just do that. I just haven't been in a tranny building mood lately. And uh, you got to be in a mood for that stuff. I don't want to get this motor done. It's been a long ass time. I've been accumulating these parts. And I'm pretty sure I have everything for this motor. Uh, somebody was uh, concerned with the lifters being in a bag, and that's the CB Performance. If you buy uh, parts from them, you're going to find out that a lot of their stuff is packaged like this because they buy in bulk and uh, or have stuff made in bulk. And I would imagine there's probably just bins of that stuff out there, uh, and they just grab what they need out of it. When you buy valves, they come loose like that too, which is... Uh, I've never had an issue. I don't think you could damage the lifter on the bench. You'd be hard pressed. I mean, it's the hardest, one of the hardest working parts in the motor. So, uh, hurting it on the stand isn't going to be possible. But, uh, I don't know if we'll use those two piece lifters in this motor. We probably use the uh, scats. So, we've got a set of in here somewhere, I think, in stock. And the scats basically just come skin back. So, you know, if you're used to seeing the scats, and those CV performance lifters would throw you off for sure, at least like that. But they're in here somewhere. They come on a piece of cardboard. And uh, I'm sure I got a set of them somewhere. But if we use the scat cam, we'll use the scat lifters. And uh, if we use the experimental cam, then we'll go ahead and uh, use the two piece lifters. But I'm planning on running this really hard, and I don't want to have any issues with those uh, lifters. I'd rather put those in sort of a more mellow motor. So this one's going to be abused pretty, uh, pretty much from the day it starts to the day it dies. So that's what's going on. You can see some more of the clearance work over in here. Some of it's sort of crude. Yeah, you could go in there and clean that up if you wanted to. We're not going to. It's going to be just fine. I've used a bunch of these cases. The only thing you got to do is check the uh, alignment on the bearing. And this flashing can cut your hand off, so you got to be real careful. This is a raised up razor blade right here. So some of them will have that, some of them won't. It won't interfere with the sump or the gasket. It sort of keeps it all contained in there, so I leave it. And uh, you can clean that up also. But anyway, let me go ahead and shut this off, load this video for you. Hope everybody's having a great President's Day. And uh, 
It's not real great here today. It's a little gloomy. Not too bad though. Not too bad. Uh, you guys make the best of it. Push that record button. It's really been good to see a couple of you guys that have been uh, missing in action. Saw John Carey put a video up and uh, Tony, Time to Tinker, put a video up. So check those guys out. It's been a while since we've heard from them. And uh, go say hi to them. Tony and his wife are uh, working on an autocross car, which is pretty cool. Anytime you can get your wife in the garage and working on a project with you, that's just awesome. So uh, that hasn't happened here in a long time, but uh, they're working on a autocross car and uh, Tony's been going through some stuff. So, 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 guess, uh, so go say hi to Tony, check out that video. And uh, yeah, go check out John Kerry's video. And uh, he went to a car show and had some awesome cars there. And uh, he's been working on uh, his car a little bit, a couple carburetor problems. But he's still driving it so uh check him out and i'm sure there's other guys too i don't get everybody's video i gotta sort of go look for him i'm sure alan's video is up sunday morning coffee i gotta go find that i saw greg porter put up a skyscraper guitar video making his little trays check him out and uh you know try to support the guys in the garage in their new endeavors and uh their new channels Help them get their projects off the ground. Go check those guys out and uh, give them a little push over there. Till the next video, you guys have a great afternoon and make it a great day, and a month, year, whatever. So all you can do is make the best of it.